Hello, I'm going to be introducing Plone, P-L-O-N-E. Plone itself is an odd surname, certainly in some languages, but it also happens to be the name of an electronic music producer from the UK. And the Plone that I'm going to be talking about actually takes its name as inspiration from that particular group whose music you can hear in the background right now. But the Plone that I'm going to be talking about is the Plone Open Source Content Management System. Plone is a CMS which works on a variety of platforms right out of the box. Plone itself can be used in a wide variety of different applications. I've deployed Plone myself to the National Cancer Institute, to NASA, to one of the clubs of my own parent-teacher association, and Plone even runs my own homepage. And of course, Plone.org's own website is run by Plone. In this video, I'm going to teach you some of the basics of Plone. This is specifically targeted for someone who's either just installed it and has never used it before, or for someone who is either hired or tasked with creating content for a new Plone website. We'll do this screencast style because, hey, screencasts are cool. For this screencast, I'm going to be using Plone version 2.5 and the default skin of Plone. Your own Plone installation may look somewhat different, but the same kinds of ideals should apply. Let's get started. The first thing you need to do with the Plone website is log in. Plone, unlike some other CMSs out there, has rigorous security. And although it can be integrated with LDAP, or you can develop code to take advantage of some legacy username password databases, out of the box it does support a username password model, which seems to work just fine. So that's one that we're going to use. To log in to a Plone website, I point my browser at it, and in this login box over here in the corner, I put in my username nutjob, my very secret password, and click the login button. Firefox offers to remember that password for me, that's handy. And then I'm logged in. Notice how parts of the user interface have changed. I've got this green frame around the content now that lets me uh, edit and change it. I also have this blue bar called the personal bar, which has some new options on it. We'll take a look at those in just a minute. When you're working with Plone, you actually have a whole bunch of um, content objects which are arranged a lot like the files and folders on your desktop computer. For example, suppose there was a Plone site called World Network News. Within the World Network News might be a folder called Breaking Stories. There might be a second folder at the same level called Local News. One of the folders that usually exists at the top level right underneath a Plone site is a Members folder. Other folders can also exist, and certainly other content objects like images and pages, and images and pages and other folders can appear within folders. Within the members folder is usually a folder which belongs just to you, your own personal folder, where you can experiment with creating and editing content. Let's take a look at my personal folder on this Plone site right now. So back to my browser, if I come up here to the personal bar and click my folder, I see my folder. And in fact, I don't have anything in it right now. But we'll soon remedy that. While I'm here though, I want to point out that any folder that you have under the top level, whether it's a regular folder or a smart folder, which we'll get into later, these become navigation tabs in your Plone site. That means that this members folder and these two smart folders, news and events, are folders in the top-level Plone site. And you can customize these top-level folders, of course, or even create them manually. How you arrange your own Plone site is really up to you, your editor-in-chief, your content staff, or your management. Now let's add some content to this demonstration site that I've set up. But where should we add it? Well, depending on the site, the permissions that the site has set up, and the permissions assigned to your account, that really depends. For example, if you're on the local news staff, you might be able to add content directly to the local news folder. Likewise, if you're on the world news staff, perhaps you can go right to the world news folder. In most situations, though, you can add content almost always to your own personal folder. That's where we're going to add the content in this screencast. So let's go back to my home directory, come up to the personal bar, and here click my folder. Then I'll go to the green bar, and from the add item menu, choose to add a page. This edit page screen appears and now I can start entering my page data. First thing I want is a title called Reviving the Aviation Cocktail. I happen to be very fond of cocktails. 
Then comes the description, and the description helps users who are looking at the various content on your website figure out if they want to read it or not. Sort of like an abstract for a, a scientific paper. Then I'll come down here to the body text section, and notice I have this editing bar with all sorts of uh, editing tools, so I don't even need to know HTML to use this system. I'll just type a little introductory paragraph for the uh, cocktail and then type in the uh, three ingredients and give instructions on mixing it. And let me just dress this page up a little bit. I'm going to come up here, highlight the word welcome, and put that into italics. I'm going to highlight the three ingredients and come up and make that a bulleted list. Finally, come down to the bottom of this page and click the Save button. I now have a new page in the portal, which is called Reviving the Aviation Cocktail. What we have so far now in this Plone site called Plone Introduction is a Members folder called Members, and with that, My folder called NutJob, and I've just added a page to that folder, Reviving the Aviation Cocktail. Once you start amassing a lot of content on your website, users will want some way to be able to find it. Now we'll look at one of my favorite features of Plone, the Live Search, which uses Ajax technology to give you feedback to your search terms as you type. What I'm going to do is click up here into the search box and just type a few letters of aviation, AVI, and look, a little window pops up which lists the one matching document. If I click on it, I'm now viewing the matching document, reviving the aviation cocktail. If I hit my access key and 4 on on a Mac, that's Control 4, and on Windows it's uh, Alt 4, and just type WELC, W-L-C, short for welcome, look, I get two matching documents. Reviving the Aviation Cocktail and Welcome to Plone both have WELC in them. And now notice I can just use the arrow keys. I don't even have to use the mouse. I can move up and down and surf this website without having to reach for the mouse. So this document matched because it had the word WELCOME in it, but maybe I'm looking for something which just has welcome in the title. For that, I can use the advanced search. The advanced search lets me search for text within each content by its title for keywords by searching just the description, by searching when the content was modified, or by limiting the search to just certain kinds of content. For example, I'm going to select all none here, choose none, and then say I'm just looking for pages. I can limit the search by author or even by review status. Let's find documents which just have welcome, though, in the title. So here in the title field, I'll hit welcome, and I get just one match this time, welcome to Plone. I can even get an RSS feed of these results. And sure enough, welcome occurs in the title of this particular page. I can click the Edit tab up there and change this page if I wanted to, too. We've seen just the page content type so far, but there's plenty of other content types that come with Plone out of the box. We haven't even touched on workflow yet. But this screencast is getting a little bit long, so I want to do one last thing before we end. Something just to satisfy my own vanity. If I come up here to the Members tab, I have a search uh, form I can fill out to find members. But if I just go right to the bottom and click Search, then I see there's only one member on this particular site, and that's me with this kind of ugly black silhouette. And I click it, I get my folder. But if I come up here to the Personal bar and click my name, then I get a chance to actually edit some of these personal details and can add information like where I am right now, which is Dallas. Please don't hold that against me. I can put in a little short biography for myself. I will say I'm a total nut job, but eminently employable. I can put in the URL to my homepage, seankelly.biz, and best of all, here I can change that black silhouette to a picture of, well, my actual head. I'll click Save, and now when I click the View tab, I, sure enough, see my own face, and if I go back to Members and search for all members, I now show. When you don't work on the site, the last thing you do is log out. So just come up here to the personal bar and click Log Out. That's all there is to it. We've covered logging in, creating web pages, searching for content, adjusting your profile, and logging out. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. There are a ton of other things you can do with Plone right out of the box, and with a little programming, you can even get into some advanced topics. But we'll have to save those for future screencasts. For now, if you want more information, there's tons of documentation at Plone.org. Or, if you want to chat to some of the people who've invented and helped maintain Plone, come to the IRC chat room IRC, on server irc.freenode.net, chatroom Plone. You can even talk to me there, and I'll help to answer your questions about Plone or on classic cocktails. My username there is, of course, NutJob.
Thank you for listening.